The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. On All Saints Sunday, All Saints Day, All Saints Sunday, I call it the day of family reunion, the day to pull out the old picture album and to go through looking, remembering those saints that we still hold in our hearts but see no longer. And we think about the saints of old, you know, the biggies, St. Peter and St. Paul and St. John, St. Luke, St. Mark, all those biggies of the Bible. But we also think about some saints who lived throughout history that, you know, we sort of remember in our calendar, St. Valentine, you know, St. Uh, Patrick, uh, St. Francis of Assisi, uh, St. Augustine. There's a certain Florida named after him, you know, St. Augustine. He lived around the year 350, 400, somewhere in there, uh, and had a big impact on Western civilization. He had a prayer when he uh, was in his early 30s. Lord, make me chaste, but not yet. You got to think about that one. Uh, there's all kinds of saints. Saint, Saint Simon of Stylites. Stylites. Apparently, Saint Simon of Stylites gave up all his possessions and decided to live his entire life on a pole. I mean, literally, on a pole. He lived, he slept, he ate, he did everything up on a pole there in, what, in, a, in the country we now call Egypt. Several people who are throughout history we call saints, but it's hard to really think of them as saints because they aren't all that saint-ish, if we think of being a saint as being perfect or walking on water, so to speak. But I don't think that's really what being a saint is all about. Being a saint begins right there. And today, James Roberts is going to be baptized right there. His life begins today in the church as he's adopted into God's family by virtue of his baptism. All of us who've been baptized actually are members of the body of Christ. We're brothers and sisters in Jesus. We say we have Jesus' blood running through our veins, so to speak. We are relative with each other. But when you think about sainthood, we always think of uh, people who've worked miracles or have the Pope declare somebody a saint. Well, we don't really kind of believe that, at least in our denomination. We say that by virtue of baptism, we become saints. From the very start of life, we start off as saints, and we progressively discover what sainthood is all about. We're still in that process, by the way. We're still in the process. And so what I did is I say call this family reunion day, I pulled out our pictorial directory 
And we still have some of them. There's a few in the back of the church. I put some more back there. We have lots more. This was from 2017, the year when I first came here to Calvary Church, 2017. And I got looking through this book, and I have to admit, I'm always surprised at how many are gone, how many are still here, and how many have come since then that aren't here giving us all the more urgency to get this up to date <laughs> quickly because we have a lot of new faces and we don't really kind of know them yet. So the one nice thing as a clergy coming into a new church, it ha this book helps to learn who's related to whom and to put faces with names. That's helpful. But it's really when you look at it as the kids that change the most. You look at some of the kids in here and uh, looking through some of the kids and it's like, they're not kids anymore. Well, Okay, here's a few that, uh, let's see who's here. We have St. Brad and St. Lori Archdeacon. Are they here? Yes. Yes, our first reader. Lori, where are you? Lori. Okay, we have St. Uh, Lori and St. Brad, her husband. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? We have St. Ruth Barth. She's right here. Is she with us? Liz, your mother. She's there in the picture. Uh, we have St. Leeds Baxter, uh, and St. Sarah Baxter, St. Jan Beam. Jan Beam, remember her? Uh, our altar guild directors for years and years and years and years. Uh, our Paschal candle is, uh, was given uh, in honor, by her, the, the, the metal part, in honor of her husband. And then the altar guild, we gave the actual candle in memory of Jan. Uh, let's see, we have uh, Marsha Bodine. She's stood there. She's not with us any longer. We have uh, Kelly Blackie, St. Kelly. You know where St. Kelly is? St. Kelly is downstairs with our littlest ones right now in the nursery. She's our nursery worker. She's here. St. Connie Bomber. How many of you remember St. Connie Bomber? And the Bomber family certainly should. Yes, she's there in our, in our pictorial directory. St. Lou Bootenshane. Where is St. Lou Bootenshane? Oh my goodness, he's way back there. Uh, he's here. Um, let's see. And there's St. Frank uh, Cipolla and Wilma Cipolla. They're here. There's lots of people here from the past and some that we've lost recently. St. Carolyn Russell. We lost her back in December, I think it was, last year. Uh, Stephen and Pauline Dyson, they're here. Um, Noreen Eaton. Jean Fisher. A member of our, one, she attended regular our 8 o'clock service. She passed away about two years ago. She's there in our pictorial directory. The reason I bring this up is because this is what All Saints Day is all about. It's about looking at those pictures and remembering those who we still hold in our hearts but see no longer. They join us in every time we come to that table, by the way. This is as close to heaven as we ever get in this life. When we come to this table, we say it's part of the communion of saints. We really believe that stuff, that when we're joined at the table, those people that we remember and we'll see no longer stand there with us in some mystical way that we'll never understand. But they're there. They're still there with us, night and day. Uh, others that are here that are now long gone, all the more reason to update this booklet, because uh, we have a lot of people who are new to this church and aren't in here, okay? So I'm encouraging us to, let's get another one of these things going, because we have a lot of new people. But you know, here are people like um, Dick Welty. There he is, right there. Many of you know Dick Welty. I didn't know his wife, Becky. She had passed away before I got here. But uh, he's there by himself. His wife had passed away. And when, one of the first things Dick told me when I first got here, he said, I am so lonely, I miss my wife. It hurts to hear that. Well, he's now with her forever. In the communion of saints. That's what this is about. This day is about remembering the saints. Okay, yeah, the biggies, the Mark, Luke, John, all that stuff. And those that are passed throughout history, you know, St. Patrick and the others. St. Nicholas. I, I forgot about him. We don't want to forget about St. Nicholas. You know St. Nicholas, uh, Santa Claus? Yeah, yeah. One of the saints joins us all the time. And those persons that we hold in our hearts here at Calvary. The reason I mention this is because I get thinking, uh, what do we think of when we say saint? When we say sainthood, we think of somebody who's perfect. And that's really not what sainthood is about. 
It's people known for their extravagant love of God. Love of God and love their neighbors themselves. That's what uh, we say that last week when we were looking at that. The, I called it our marching orders. That's our mission statement. Our mission, our reason for being is to love God and love our neighbors ourselves. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, Jesus said in last week's gospel. This week we hear about the Beatitudes, the core of Jesus' teaching. Blessed are, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they are the ones who will be filled. Jesus offers hope to people who really didn't have any. The core of Jesus' mission was, he says, go and make more disciples of all nations. But today we are. Today, we're going to welcome a new member of the kingdom of God. We have a new member coming today by virtue of our baptism. James Robert Siffringer will be baptized today. How many of you remember your, your day of your baptism? Anyone, anyone remember the day? Raise your hand. Anyone? One. Well, I actually do too, so I can remember mine. Not many people, I asked this to the kids today in Children's Chapel, do you remember your day of your baptism? I, we actually had a few who did. Maybe they do. We usually don't, okay? And James, you won't remember the day of your baptism today at all. He's too young. But we will remember it. We will remember the day that we, as a family, as brothers and sisters in Jesus, welcomed a new member of the kingdom of God by virtue of our baptism. Today we enjoy on this All Saints Day the making of a new saint. Thanks be to God. Amen.